Um, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to the uh, hundreds of people that um, sent me messages on my birthday saying, you know, happy birthday and such. I wanted to actually write back to you all individually, but then I realised that that was going to be uh, a mammoth task and I didn't actually have the time for it. I apologise about that. So this is a video to say thank you to all of all of you. Believe it or not, this is actually the third time that we've tried to film this video. We had technical faults with the previous two times. Um, so hopefully this time it will go out and I just want to say uh, thank you for your for your, your, your generous messages and for your kind words. Um, we did our talk yesterday um, at Lancaster, sorry not Lancaster, Edinburgh University and we uh, did our talk on Nietzsche and Christian ontology and because of my own amateur um, style and the fact that I don't really give many sort of set piece presentations I didn't actually leave myself enough time to do the entire description of uh, Christian ontology. So I'm, I'm going to continue that now. A Christian as freed captive. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the captives will be released and the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free. A Christian is someone who has come out of the bondage of sin. That means that they are someone who have seen that they are enslaved to sin and are taking their bonds off. They are able to release themselves from the bond by the grace of God. A Christian is someone who is freed from the fear of death and its consequences. And therefore, when someone doesn't fear death, there is little else that they need to fear. A Christian is someone who is no longer under the domain of the devil because we are able to see how the devil is operating increasingly in our own lives, in our communities, and in the church, and in the world. Christ himself has paid the price of this freedom from bondage on his, by his death on the cross, that which was needed to release man from this bondage was paid, the ransom given. Therefore the Christian is now free to walk in a new direction of life loosed from the chains of sin and thus must commit himself to freeing himself increasingly and to free other captives. A Christian as adopted child, Romans 8.15 For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption by which we cry, Abba, Father. The Christian relationship to God is not one simply of a slave to a master, but of one as an adopted son before a loving father. And the time in which this was written, the idea of adoption wasn't some act of charity as it is now in the Christian world. You would adopt a son in the Roman world because you decided that your own children were no good to inherit your fortune, wealth, and power. So you would adopt a son as the chosen one so that they could inherit all that you wish to give them. And so adoption was about the son that you wanted as opposed to some kind of act of charity. And that's how the readers would have understood this. And so we are the wanted children of God. We are therefore the inheritors of the kingdom of God. It belongs to us and all the riches thereof. We are royal children in a royal court and thus we have a dignity that cuts across any kind of social status and that dignity is something that should mark our interactions with one another. Christian as friend, John 15, 14 to 15. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatever I command you. Our Lord is our companion on a journey of life. He's not some aloof ruler. He walks with us along the road to Emmaus. We can speak to him, not with formulas, not with one who have, understands some great concept of theology, but in a simple humility, in a simple humanity, because we know that our Lord understands the fullness of our humanity. That, that, that there is an intimacy 
between us and our Lord as that between two close friends. And that is based upon our following of his commands as closely as we can. The Christian a servant, Matthew 20, 26. It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant. A Christian is not to be haughty in his relationships to his brothers and sisters, but to abase himself, taking on the form of a servant and seeking to do that good to his brothers and sisters that he would want for himself. He's to serve them as a servant by washing their feet. We are to meet one another's needs through our own efforts, utilizing our own skills and abilities. And by first meeting the needs of our own community, by helping our brothers and sisters and learning how to help our brothers and sisters, we can then prepare ourselves through the combination of resources and abilities that we develop in that process to meet the needs of our neighbours and those around us. Christian as conqueror, Romans 8, 37. Know in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Christians are to forcibly push past all obstacles to the kingdom of God. We are not to allow ourselves to be hindered in entering the kingdom of God by any political force, by any social force, by any personal habit. Christians are to capture every thought that is in opposition to God. So that is both within our own minds and those kinds of spectrums of thought that are at work at large in society. We are therefore to struggle against every spiritual power and dominion that serves the God of this world that is the devil. And thus that is why Christians are opposed to all ideologies and worldviews that are not built on Christ. Christian as witness, Acts 1, 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. A Christian, therefore, is to bear witness to the truth that is in Christ, whatever that cost may be for doing so. A Christian, therefore, has to testify to the works of God. In the history of the world, in the, the writings and the uh, actions of the prophets and the apostles, in the life of the church, and also with him himself, giving testimony to what God is doing. He's to call others to acknowledge that truth for themselves and to act accordingly. Like a witness in a court, he is to give his testimony for all to see. A Christian, a stranger and foreigner, in Hebrews 11:13, These all died in faith without receiving the things promised, but they saw them in the distance and welcomed them and acknowledged that they were strangers and foreigners on earth. A Christian, therefore, is passing through this world. He's on a, a pilgrim, on a pilgrimage, and he's heading towards his homeland. He is therefore not attached to the things of this world, its concerns or its politics, the ideas of national interest or ideological causes such as Marxism have no truck with the Christian. He should appear strange to the natives of the earth because he seeks to live a different kind of life that is pointed directly and squarely at a homeland that lay beyond death. Because of the difference of his culture, his values, his worldview and his beliefs, he should appear as an alien to this culture. And therefore, he has an understanding of those who are refugees and aliens in other cultures and can greet them as fellow travellers, as fellow foreigners, as fellow strangers in a land and meet them on the journey with compassion and understanding. His loyalty is to his own people and to his fellow pilgrims as like any patriot, his land his homeland is elsewhere and he must remain loyal to it, just as those who travel from one nation to another remain loyal to the nation of their birth. Christian a soldier, Philippians 2.25 And I thought it necessary, Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow workman, 
and fellow soldier and your apostle and servant to my need to send unto you. A Christian is to be a fighter of the good fight, to fight valiantly under the banner of Christ against sin, the world and the devil. A Christian is on campaign and therefore should not concern himself with things that are connected to civilian life and uh, a life of ease and distraction, but must exact from himself the discipline of a soldier to fight the good fight that he's called to, that fight for justice, that spiritual fight to master his own soul. A Christian is to endure suffering in good spirit and overwhelmingly conquer that which opposes his king. A Christian, a spiritual athlete, 2 Timothy 2.5. And athletes cannot win the prize unless they follow the rules. The Christian is to train his inner man so that he might compete and excel in good works. He is to run the race of life with a desire to triumph and to seize the crown of glory and thus must run it with a spirit of an athlete. He must discipline his conduct so as to make himself fit through the practices of spiritual disciplines so that when the time of testing comes, he is not found wanting. A Christian as bride. Revelations 19.7 Let us be glad and rejoice and let us give honour to him. For the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb and his bride has prepared herself. Christians are to have eros for our God and to seek to be faithful towards him. Our consummation into glory lay at a future time and is the purpose of our very lives. We are the beloved of Christ who has won us unto himself through his generous courtship in his incarnation, crucifixion and resurrection. Christian as body. 1 Corinthians 12.12 12. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Christians accept a common identity which overrides the privileges of individuality. We aren't simply to see ourselves as individuals on some kind of spiritual journey, but as a collective and to behave as such. Christians stand in solidarity with one another. If you harm one of us, you harm all of us. And so we are not separate from those Christians who are being persecuted abroad. The Christian cannot be separate from the rest of the body and thus must find his role within the body. And thus we must give to the body what we have so that the whole body is made healthy. And that shouldn't be interpreted in the sense of the institution, but our brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Christian as royal priest, 1 Peter 2.9 But you are my chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. He is to stand before God in intercession for his people. A Christian is to stand and intercede for the world. In the order of Melchizedek, he is to sanctify the world through his own personal sacrifice. He has the right to come into the holy presence of God and to offer his soul and body to be a living sacrifice and through that um, advance the redemption of the world. Christian as worshipper, Matthew 4.10 Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. One who offers his heart, mind, soul, body and strength to the Lord is a truly worshipper and that it requires the use of our whole being. And so we must give to the Lord our God the whole of our heart, the whole of our mind, the fullness of our soul, the fullness of our body and all of our strength in his service. We're to be a living sacrifice to the Lord our God, not simply see our sacrifice of worship as something that we do in church on a Sunday, but to pour out our life as an oblation to our Lord and our God. 
and an oblation was the pouring out of a wine sacrifice on an altar. Christian, a citizen of heaven, Ephesians 2.19. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Therefore, a citizen of God is a under a new governance, a new ruler, and a new rule. We have left the nation that we once belonged to. We have torn up our passports, we have burnt them in the bin, and we have entered into a new kingdom. Our allegiance, therefore, is to the kingdom of God and to its king, our Lord Jesus Christ, and that allegiance cuts above any other concern. And thus we seek the good of the Christian commonwealth, through all that we do and all that we seek to be. Christian as flock. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hears his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. A sheep is one who trusts the shepherd and as Christians we must trust the good shepherd that is Jesus Christ because only God is good. A sheep knows the voice of the shepherd, and thus he seeks to follow him, and follow him wherever the shepherd leads. A sheep is constantly the, at the prey of wolves, and thus, as sheep, we are at the prey of wolves. Indeed, the devil, the devil strides the earth like a lion, seeking the ruin of souls, and therefore we must stick together as a herd, so that we are not someone that is overcome by his strength. And finally, Christian as disciple. Matthew twenty-eight nineteen. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. A Christian therefore is one who does the commands of his teacher. He does not elevate himself above his teacher and does not consider himself greater than his teacher. He doesn't therefore stand in judgment of his teacher's commands or of his teacher's teaching, but he sets himself at his teacher's feet and learns with humility, not pride. A disciple is one who takes up his cross, denies himself and follows his Lord daily. He is someone who seeks to imitate his Lord in all of his character a disciple leaves behind all the distractions and all the other causes to follow his Lord. He is someone who seeks to learn from his Lord and sees his Lord as the fountain of truth and life. When our Christ taught about eating of his body and his blood and said, that those that do not eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood shall have no life in them. Many of the disciples that he had at that time said, truly this is a hard teaching, and they got up and left. And Jesus, our Lord, looked to his apostles and said, will you leave me also? To which the apostle John said, and where shall we go? For you have the words of eternal life. They understood that Christ was the light by which they could see all other things, as C.S. Lewis said. And they saw that there was no other fountain to go to. And that must be the way of being for the Christian. That we follow Christ and we see him as the basis of all truth by which all other things are measured, including the culture around us. And we follow him faithfully what, uh, in by picking up our cross and carrying it wherever that leads. The list that I've given isn't a complete list. I, I could have put in far, far more things. But by pulling out these mo biblical motifs, these biblical pictures, I have hoped to try and give an understanding of what it means to be a Christian, to be a human being who is a Christian, or rather to be a Christian human being.